Hi everyone, my name is Lillian and welcome to my channel Alpha Genesis. I'm joined here by my friend and colleague Trey, who is also in my PhD program. And we are currently doing a video series on how to apply to a PhD program. And today's video is about getting letters, letters of, of recommendation. recommendation. So, I mean, y'all have probably had experience with getting letters of recommendation, you know, for college yeah. or, you know, references for a job, but it's a little bit different um, here. You know, this is a research degree. So the people you'd ask is kind of different, right? Yeah. Um, you mostly, since a PhD is all about the science and the research, you typically want to choose letter writers who you've done research with and they can speak to your research skills um, and how you are as a scientist. Um, and preferably you choose people you've done research with for a long period of time who know you well. I think that's the most important yeah. thing because you don't just don't want to choose someone who's going to write a generic letter about you. You want someone who's going to write something deeply personal and unique. Yeah. And it's really and going to yeah stand out. And just to like talk about my experience, the people I asked were an advisor I did research with over one summer, another advisor I did research with over <clears throat> another summer, and then I also got um, a professor. I took cell biology with her, but I also TA'd her class, and mm. she was my thesis advisor. So she kind of got multiple aspects to me, you know? Yeah, I agree. And um, I think you should think deeply about who you want to ask prior to asking them. Just don't, don't make a flippant decision about who to ask because letters of recommendation, in my opinion, are critical yeah. to a successful graduate they school. They make or break one. I think they know? make or break your application. Um, some PIs have a name that can maybe even get you through the door alone um, if you've worked for them. <laughs> so it's, it's really, really critical that you find the right people to write a letter of re recommendation. Hey y'all, it's editing Lillian right here. Um, one thing I didn't touch on that is actually a really common question people get now is, can I get letters of rec writers that aren't in academia? Like for example, they don't, like they either don't do research and they were like my boss in something or they are actually in industry doing research. And I've heard a lot of different things about this. Um, but I think a lot of the advice I've been given or I've heard from people who are on admissions committees is that if this person will know you well um, and like, you know, it's it's OK if you had one kind of experience like that. Right. Like that's normal. Um, then, yeah, definitely you can get that. You just have to make sure that the majority of your writers are research people, because otherwise, like, they people who aren't in research or in academia at least can't necessarily attest to your research potential or rather the faculty that's what they think so yeah just to answer that question for any of you who might have it and then once you do that you want to give them ample time to write you a good letter of recommendation please don't email pis you know a week before your letter is due to write you a letter that is really um, unprofessional, like, uh, is the best way I can put it. And you won't um, get a good letter, you know? Yeah, you won't like, get a good letter because they're busy people. They have other stuff to do. So you want to give them ample time. I think a month is is a, is a plenty of time for them to, to yeah. write it. And then once you've asked them, you want to make sure that you give them all the, you know, the necessary information, like, in terms of what are the schools you're applying to, when are their letters due, if they have to go online, what's the, the platform? Um, maybe like you have to send them a notification about, from, from the platform that they then sign into to write your letter of recommendation. You wanna give them all the logistical information that they need to write it. Um, and then, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think Trey's on point. I think a month is definitely enough to write a letter. I personally like ask them way in advance okay. as well. I like, I didn't say like, you know, here are all the schools I'm applying to, like, way in advance. Okay. But I ask them, like, and, and I ask in person. That's just my thing. I, mm. I don't feel comfortable asking through an email. Mm. Um, but people have done it before, and it's fine. Um, but I would say, like, for example, um, I'm thinking about applying to graduate school. Would you feel comfortable writing me a letter? Or would you write me a strong letter of recommendation? Mm. So that's that's important because people can write you a letter of recommendation, but would they write you a strong one? You know, that's yeah. why it's super important mm. to pick very carefully, you know, who is going to write your letters. 
And then right after you decide that and you kind of get to that, you know, month window and you've, you've uh, picked all the programs and, and compiled everything in an Excel document, what I would do is send a few things to the person who's going to write you a letter. For example, your curriculum vitae, which is, I think that's how you say it, yeah. um, also known as your CV. So that's kind of like your, your research resume. And then what I did, because letters of recommendation are hard to write, you know, even if you've been working in people's labs or, you know, working with them for a while, it, it does take a lot of effort to write a really good letter. And something that I think helps people, and this is something I personally did, was I actually told um, each of my letter writers what to emphasize about me. So that, for example, I had my one letter writer, uh, the first PI, I asked him to kind of emphasize my research trajectory because I had done research with him mm -hmm. since I was mm -hmm. like a sophomore, right? Um, and even though it was only one summer, he kind of saw how I grew as I presented and things like that. Um, I asked my other letter writer if she could focus on my research potential um, more than everything, though everyone should talk about research potential, but I asked her to really focus in on that. And I asked my last letter writer to also emphasize me in terms of my community work and how I was a TA, that I really liked working with students. And I also sent her like all the presentations wow. I had done in her class. Yeah, I was kind of thorough. <clears throat> That's legit. I was, That's I was, very you know, serious. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I think the more you give them to basically directly write, mm. the happier they'll be writing your letter. <laughs> Um, so it just, it depends on your relationship with the person, you know? And, uh, last piece of advice is feel free to send reminders if you think it's necessary, because there's some people you may not trust, um, to remember. Yeah. Unfortunately, some you do trust, but for the ones you don't trust, you maybe want to send them a, rem a reminder the week before just to check in yeah. if they haven't already submitted your letter. Yeah. Just to make sure that they get it on time. And actually one thing I want to add to that. Yeah. I was freaking out because right after the application had passed, I realized that one of my letter writers didn't submit mm -hmm. her letter of recommendation for like two of the programs. And of course I was, I was freaking yeah. out because I was like, I'm not going to get in. Yes, be sure that they get it in on time. But if they're a couple days late, I, I learned that yeah, it's not the end of the world. Like yeah. these are other advisors and other professors. They know how right. busy your letter of rec writers are. Um, but really do try and get it in on time mm -hmm. because that may have just been my circumstance, but you don't know if that will be. And, and maybe things. email the program ahead of time just yeah. to let them know the, the, the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those were our, uh, our tips on getting letters of recommendation. If you have any other tips to share with people or you have any questions about it, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe because there are more videos coming out on PhD topics and on PhD admissions. So yeah, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.